Good evening, and welcome to Diversity in Central Ohio, a program of the Columbus Community Relations Commission, which is an office of off, uh, Mayor Michael B. Coleman. Uh, we're so glad to have you with us tonight, and I'm here, as always, with my co-host, Neil Simmel. Good evening, Neil. Good evening, Nelson. How are you tonight? Doing good, thank you. We have, uh, uh, we're going to talk tonight about a very special person in the, in the world. A uh, Nobel Prize winner who the city of Columbus celebrates on an annual basis. Uh, and I'm talking about no, none other than Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And we have with us three very special guests in this segment to talk about the upcoming program and some of the events that are going on around our program. So let me introduce to you our guest tonight, Dan Willis who is the program producer and director for the Martin Luther King program this year. Hello, Dan. Hello. Thanks for having me. Welcome to our show again. Thank you. <laughs> and we also have Susan Brooker, who's with us. Who's the director of Ballet Met Dance Academy. Yes. Good evening, Susan. Thank you for being with us today. Good evening. Thank you for having me here. And also, last but not least, of course, is Rebecca Vierhoff, who is the director of community engagement for Hands On Central Ohio. Yes, sir. So we're so glad to have you tonight. We're talking about the city. You know, we're at the, we're at the kind of holy day, holiday part of the year, and we start focusing at community relations on Dr. King and his great contributions. And this year, again, we, we have the pleasure of having Dan Willis as our producer. And uh, we have Ballet Met, who is a part of that program each year, and Hands On Central Ohio is becoming our good friend and partner on youth volunteerism. But let me just ask you, which we ask, I, I, Dan, we have to include you in this. We ask all of our guests for a definition of diversity. So um, let's just sweep down the line. Uh, I said, Susan, I'm going to start with you, so we'll do that. Susan, would you give us a definition of diversity? Um, for me, diversity is what makes life interesting. Um, in, the, in the dance world, um, we are constantly um, working with professionals from all over the world. Um, we work with people from every part, and we link and, um, and, and have, have a language that somehow works with us all. And so it's what makes my life work and what, make, what makes my profession work. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. It seems to me that dance is a universal language. I think so, yes. So yes. thank you. And Rebecca, mm -hmm. uh, definition of diversity for you. Yeah, to me, uh, diversity is people from varying backgrounds coming together to achieve a common goal. And at Hands On Central Ohio, we engage hundreds of volunteers. They're very diverse. They come from all over the world, different backgrounds, but we all work together to strengthen our community. Well, great. Those are great definitions. <laughs> Did I get your definition yet? No, you didn't. So, Dan, give us your definition. My definition is a little different. I think at one time, diversity was relegated to racial and ethnic differences. But I think now with the younger people, that diversity, they define it differently. I think they define diversity in terms of the skills that they bring to the table. They define it in terms of the interests that they have. And they look for people who have similar interests that can either help them get ahead or that they can help. So I think diversity is, is more of a nebulous concept now. It doesn't necessarily have a face like it did back in the 60s, you know, black and white and red and yellow, but it has more to do with what do I have, do I bring to the table that will enable you to do a better job? Great definitions, don't you think? Very good, very good. Speechless. Uh, <laughs> Susan, uh, well, let me start maybe with Rebecca. Let's come back to take down the table this way. Would you tell us a little bit about your position with Hands On Central Ohio and what, and what is the mission of your agency? Hands on Central Ohio is uh, it's the Volunteer Action Center here in Central Ohio. My role is the Director of Community Engagement. I work with hundreds of nonprofit organizations in Central Ohio. Uh, we recruit volunteers and we do community service projects all over the city. Um, Hands on Central Ohio, our tagline is Be the Change. Uh, we want to equip volunteers with the resources to really make the change in the community that they want to see in the world. Well, great. 
Uh, I'm being reminded that uh, we want to let our audience know this is a live call-in show. You can call in with your questions about the Dr. King celebrations of the city and, uh, and ask any question of our guests. So the number is 614-645-6557. 614-645-6557. So please call in tonight. Okay, Susan, uh, would you tell us a little bit about your position in uh, Ballet Met? And tell us, who is Ballet Met? What is that? Okay, Ballet Met is um, an arts organization. It has three prongs to it. There is the professional ballet company, professional dance company. There is the Ballet Met Dance Academy. And we also have a very strong education um, part to the organization. And we go our separate ways, but we're all working together um, to, to bring dance into the community in, in many ways. Um, my position as um, Academy Director is to look after the programming, is to, um, is to find the appropriate um, faculty to develop the programs that are going to help uh, our dancers grow in many ways. Some of them are growing to be um, professionals who will go and have careers um, in, the, in the professional theatre. Others just dance for the joy of it. And that's, that's a very large number and we want to give them the best possible experience so that they can have the sense of personal discipline and satisfaction that goes with developing a, a, a refined art form, but at, at, at the same time, just have that joy of moving and, and grow to love dance, so that when they are older, they will either bring their own children to dance classes, or they will go to the theater and, and have that wonderful experience of seeing live productions, which I think is something very special. And it's something special that happens in our program. <laughs> Uh, so we are so glad that you've been a part, and Ballet Met has been a part of our program for Dr. King many for years. many years. Mm -hmm. So let, Dan, let's jump into the show, the program, and what's going on with well, these events. I'm really pleased about this year's program. Um, I don't know if you know, but for the last eight years, we've taught an internship at The Ohio State University in the College of Arts and Sciences, the Center for Study and Teaching and Writing. I got it right. And we teach the students they do, they, how to write a script. They do the research and they write it and we have all the wonderful elements that it takes for them to understand as a writer how to put together a script. And this year our theme is we always use celebrate the legacy as our hook, but this year it's getting on the bus. Getting on the bus. And you might think we're talking about Rosa Parks, but we're not. We're talking about busing in Columbus. We're talking about how did Columbus honor the, le the legacy of Dr. King when they were doing desegregation after Brown versus Board of Education that happened in 1957. Columbus started doing busing in 1979 and for 95,000 children, and it happened without an incident. And there's some remarkable stories around how Columbus took the lead in, in desegregation in our country. So there's a lot of history there, and it shows a lot of strength in young people, a lot of strength in teachers and the choices that they made. I think it's really, really good. I think people really enjoy it and learn a lot about Columbus's history, a, a piece of history that we never talk about. We've never talked about busing. I talked to Monsignor Sorahan, who was the superintendent of Catholic schools, and he said no one has ever asked me about busing when he was a superintendent. So there's a lot of good information that we're going to have. Um, what we're going, to, what we also have are a lot of volunteers that make the program every year, a very good um, program. Um, acting in Columbus. Well, let me start back again. One of the things I'm most proud about this show is that this is really a grassroots show like Dr. King would want. We have people involved at all different levels, all different incomes, uh, wants to be a part of this legacy. We have children that are volunteering, we have adults that volunteer, we have students that volunteer, and all these make a phenomenal program. Um, one of the things that we're really proud of is having Ballet Met a part of the program. And for the last 14 years, Ballet Met has been a part of this program. 14 years. 14 years they've been a part of it. That's a wonderful and one of the things that makes us so proud about the Ballet Met, I think we have a clip for it too, is that it gives our audience an opportunity to see, as Susan was saying, an art form that they only see on television. They get to see it firsthand. They get to see the grace. They get to see the, the, uh, the command that these students have and see themselves on that stage as well. 
And so we're very proud to bring different types of dance. We bring jazz dance, we bring uh, calypso, we bring uh, flamenco, we bring point. We bring all different types of dance to our stage so that the students can see what happens. One of the things that makes our program very remarkable is our 150 children Dr. Martin Luther King Mass Choir. These are children that are ages 6 through 12 who join our choir and they learn two songs from our, our choir director Cynthia Goins. She writes children specific music so that it's appropriate for that age to do that. She teaches them one song and the second song she teaches them how to sign the song as well as sing the song. And we're very fortunate to have a partnership with Children's Hospital that they let us use their facility. They give us free parking, they give healthy snacks for the kids. And they say that, uh, Angela Mingo says that their ability to help us is in a line with their mission. So we get children working together, learning music, and they also learn a little bit of history too. They just don't learn songs all the time that they're there. They also learn a lot about Dr. King's history so they know why they are a part of this program. We're hoping to plant seeds with these children that become the people in our community. Well, that's a phenomenal uh, and draw. The children is oh. something that really makes people come. And then Ballet Met is one of the very first groups that perform. So, so these are students. Yes, these are students. Um, we have the, the privilege, um, and well, I've been with Ballet Met, this is my fourth year now. Yes. So, um, and um, over the last four, year, four years, we've had the privilege of opening the program. And, um, and the, these are students who are um, at an advanced level. They're students who are dancing many hours um, during the week. And um, our, our choice of, of pieces, is, of work, um, is usually made upon the, th the actual particular theme of, of, the, um, of the event each year. We want something that is going to really link in with that um, emotionally. And so um, I'm very fortunate to have a, a very wonderful modern teacher, Maria Glimpscher, who works with the students, who trains them. And what's important with the students' work is not just the, um, the accuracy and the perfection of what they're doing, but it's also the emotional integrity of the message that they're trying to give. And um, it's often, it's very special for these students to be able to link in with the wider community in a, in a performance like this. Yes. And it makes real um, the work that they're actually performing because it has a, a larger significance beyond what they're usually doing in the studio. So it's a great experience for uh, them. Well, I like that you mentioned that mm -hmm. link because uh, mm -hmm. I know for many of our community folks, they may have not been exposed to ballet. And here yes. they get it, and yeah. now they've been, they've been getting it for 14 years yes. in a free, it's as free to the public, and mm -hmm. anybody can come and enjoy. And we've seen the dancers, haven't oh, we, yeah. Neil? Mm -hmm. They're Beautiful. magnificent each year. So, uh, um, how many do we know? How many students will be in this group, or do we? What do we know about this particular group that's working? Okay, um, they're going to be dancing a piece called "Standing," and it was choreographed by Maria Glimpscher this year. And there will be eight students dancing in it. Um, and and again, it's it's wonderful for us to be able to show the community that um, although our title is Ballet Met. It's not just ballet that we perform, either the professional company or within the academy, that um, we, we have a very diverse um, a, a group of dance forms, of dance techniques that we're teaching. We have a very diverse group of students with whom we work, who have different bodies, have different talents, and we want to be able to help them all fulfill their potential, whichever way they want to go. Incidentally, we actually do have um, an African-American student who is dancing Clara in the Nutcracker, possibly oh, as we speak, great. but um, this year, which is very exciting. It, it's mm. such a beautiful and, and well put together piece every year. How long does it take to put that together? When do you start rehearsing and writing and doing all that? Um, it's, it's, it's usually a piece that the students are working on from, let's say, the fall of of the previous year. So a lot, yes. a lot of time goes in. Yes, and um, because this is very I an important event for us, um, we prefer to put on a piece that the students 
have already performed so that they can go on stage and really invest um, themselves as artists in it. Um, and, and so, yes, but it, it, takes, it takes many hours of rehearsal and of, um, uh, and of course there's all the classroom preparation even before they get to the rehearsal so process. What are the age of the dancers? Um, the dancers th this year, uh, and in these groups, they're usually from about 16 to 18, something like that. Uh. The nice thing mm -hmm. about students being a part of this program is that they get a chance firsthand to offer their service. Like, you know, mm. the whole point of having the Dr. King celebration, it's a day on rather than a day off. We have a lot of participating groups that help us through their service and they offer their services for free. Acting in Columbus is who we use for casting for this. And Acting Columbus helps students. Now, our students for Acting Columbus mm -hmm. can be students, young children, or it can be people that are seniors. These are people who want to learn how to do commercial work and can and be extras in movies. So this gives them an opportunity to be on stage. So the script that the OSU students have written they're the ones that actually perform that. We have six um, actors this year from Acting in Columbus that will go through rehearsals and be ready for our show this year and really wow people. We always get excellent students for that. Well, speaking of uh, volunteerism, Rebecca, I understand we're doing something a little different this year. Yes. Yes, uh, Hands-On Central Ohio is coordinating a youth service fair that as the march comes over from City Hall, uh, the youth and their parents will be able to participate in, in this fair. Hands-On is recruiting about 20 different nonprofit organizations to showcase their youth volunteer opportunities. We have some really great organizations already on board. We have the American Red Cross. We have Habitat for Humanity. We have um, Local Matters, lots of different types of agencies that can showcase everything that they can offer to youth volunteers. So we're not just espousing the ideals of Dr. King. You can actually practice them that, that very evening. Absolutely. Sign up to volunteer. Yes. The, the youth will be able to go through and find out what they can do in the future. But we're also going to have many service projects that they can do on that day. Wonderful. Um, what they're going to do is write thank you cards to the troops. Uh, we have a contact overseas, but we'll be sending all of those cards to brighten the days of, of some of our troops overseas. We're also going to be doing a, a plant a seed of service project. So each child can come and they'll do a make one, take one. They will make uh, a seed, plant it, and then they'll make another one and leave it that we'll then donate to a local community garden that can get them started in their, in their service. Um, the point of planting a seed is exactly what Dan was talking about earlier, planting that seed of service. It just takes one act of service to really incorporate that into, into the youth's lives, and that's what we want. We want them to get started early volunteering so that it becomes part of their lives as they grow older and they can become future civic leaders in our community. Wonderful. If it becomes part of their lives, that means that they take it with them and they give it to their children, they give it to their friends, and it works. It's kind of like that commercial where one person opens a door for somebody else and then that person picks up somebody that, something they dropped, and it continues on and on, which is a remarkable thing to do. We're very fortunate, I'll tell you, honestly, we're very fortunate to have hands-on a part of it because our audience, we had over 1,300 people at the program last year, parents and children, sisters and brothers, cousins and uncles and aunts. And the nice thing about it is that they believe in the legacy of Dr. King. They want to learn more about it. They want their children to learn more about it. And with hands-on, not only do they learn about it, but they get to do it. Right. So it doesn't last just for that hour-long show that we do at Veterans Memorial that's free to the public, <laughs> but it's something that they can take home with them and continue to be involved in the community. And hopefully these students will have an opportunity to learn how they can make our Columbus community even stronger at a very early age. Can you imagine what they're going to be like when they're 21, if they start when they're 8 years old Absolutely. volunteering? Mm -hmm. we, we, sometimes we lose sight of the power of young people. And young people have tremendous gift because they don't have to pay bills, they don't have to drive, they can focus on a task and do it better than we can a lot of times. And that's why we're very pleased to have hands-on a part of the program again. Not only to be there when people come in from the march that starts at 4 o'clock at City Hall, people can gather there for a hot chocolate and live entertainment and cookies and that type of thing. We'll start the march across the Broad Street Bridge. But they also will be able, the mayor will talk about the volunteer led effort. Led by the mayor. The march led will be led saying, by the mayor. Effort, yes. And City Council will be leading them. And our director, Napoleon Bell II, will be leading that entourage and organizations will be carrying their banners yep. and all of that will be happening to build up to come over to 
Vets Memorial. We're also excited this year to have Columbus City Schools endorsing the program. So mm -hmm. we're encouraging them to have banners and be a part of the march and come over to the program too. But after that, the mayor will talk about the volunteer efforts so that students will get a chance to go back into the lobby again and find out more about the volunteer effort. In the lobby, we also have the art show this year again. So there's going to be a lot of representation of youth activity, youth challenges, things to help youth be better than they ever thought they could be and see other youth who are successful. Can you tell us about the ambassadors that we have this year? Absolutely. We are having about 10 really great students from Columbus City Schools who will be serving as ambassadors and, and volunteers on the day of. So they're going to be helping the kids do the service projects. They're going to be helping show people where their seats are. They're going to be volunteer leaders on that day. And what a great way to, to work uh, in volunteering than to volunteer and help other kids volunteer. It's like, you know, there's a poet that said, your action speaks so loudly, I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> and I think that if, if we can have students teach other students through their action, I th this is going to be remarkable to do this year after year. Um, we also, if I can also talk about our, our music, we're starting something new. I talked about the 150 children's choir that we have every year. That age group is 6 to 12, and I always felt that we're, when they hit 12, why do we have to stop? You know? So this year we're starting something new, we're calling it the Dream Choir. And these are students who were in the younger choir and are being asked to be a part of the larger choir, I mean the, the older choir, that are 13 to 18. So our goal is to have two choirs that will cover children as a part of this program from 6 years old to 18 years old. So keep your fingers crossed that it works out well and that we, it'll be an exciting part of the program this year. So again, to get children involved in the program at different levels, in different ways, and we don't lose them just because they turn 13. There's also other music in this show. There is. There's quite a bit of music. There. We talk about students. A lot of the students that we have are in the orchestra pit, too. We have students with the Mark Lomax trio. He brings other students in and takes care of all the arrangements and everything. So we have live, originally written music specifically for our program, music you won't hear anywhere else. So this is just really a professional show, staffed by amateur talent. Yeah. And again, new this year, speaking of music, jazz arts group, we started a fellowship with them, and the fellowship consists of seven students that are from high schools from all over Columbus and three faculty members. And what these students have done is that they're writing music. They have written music. We have three acts to our celebration on stage. And these are students who have not only written the music after each act, but they're also going to perform the music. And so you're going to hear a lot of different styles of a style of music that's appropriate for 1957, a style of music that's appropriate for 1979, and then a current day music that's going to be a little surprise. <laughs> but it gives them a chance not only to write but also perform and be a part of the program so that it ties in just like the dance ties into the theme, their music ties into the topics for each of the different acts that we have. Dan, are there any uh, behind the scenes people, sponsors, or anyone like that that we need to know about? Oh, there are always sponsors. We couldn't do it without sponsors. Um, some of our, a lot of our sponsors we've had for 14 years. Medical Mutual of Ohio has been a remark, it's not Medical Mutual of Ohio, it's Medical Mutual. They have places in other states right now. They've been a tremendous sponsor through the years. Um, AEP has been a sponsor for several years for us. We're very glad to have them on board. COSI allows us to give these gifts to our children's choir of passes for a pass for, that will last for one year. It's our way of, of having the mayor say thank you to the children. Uh, Franklin County Commissioners, we couldn't do it without them. They really help offset a lot of our costs because in these financial times, cities' budgets have been cut, and we're really glad that they've come forth to help us out. They'll be a partner. In yeah. Yeah. And then the Ohio State University, you know, that allows us to have these internships that allow their students to get practical application, and not theory, but practical application, and they can come to the program, and you'll see them on stage too, and they can see how the crowd responded to their writing. So we have a, we have a lot. We have um, uh, Karen Rizzio and Alan Debelak, who are private sponsors who help us out. We will accept funds. We will accept donations. You know, it helps us keep the lights on. Well, it looks like we're going to have just a wonderful program uh, and, and exciting things for everyone in the family. Mm -hmm. So a lot, of, a lot of things around children, but adults will, un, will uh, appreciate music and hear these plays. So the whole family will... We'll have a great time coming out. One more time, the date and time? It's January 16th. We ask people to start at City Hall at 4 o'clock. There'll be hot chocolate and banners and fun things going on there. 
the mayor and city council and all the other wonderful people will be there to do the march, the ceremonial march across the Broad Street Bridge like Dr. King did in Selma uh, for voting rights. And then they'll come over to Vets Memorial. For those who may not want to do the march, our doors to the theater will open at 5 o'clock. Okay. They can come in a little earlier than that if they want to look at the volunteer fair. I think that starts around 4.30? 4.30. 430. But the doors to the theater will open at 5 o'clock because we have some last minute things. And then um, after that, they, the program begins at 6 o'clock and runs till 7 o'clock. And tickets are available? The tickets are free. The tickets are available at the door. So just come on just down. Come on down. You've you got to pay for parking. There's a nominal charge for parking. But just come on in. Bring your families. This is a family-focused program. There's so few things that you can take your family to and get excited about. You can do this, and it's remarkable. I just wanted to mention that for those that want to participate in the march but might have disabilities, CODA has, is providing bus service so that those people can, can be with the procession as it goes across the bridge. So uh, I know you said if some people didn't want to march, but if they want to be a part of it and they have disabilities, they can be there and be a part of it as well. And Veterans Memorial is AD accessible, so that's not a problem either. I see we have a caller. Caller, do you have a question or a comment for our panel? Yes, um, I'm, I'm new to the area, and I was very curious uh, with respect to the academy, um, which I'm a little bit familiar with because I have friends that have daughters that go to it, and they're very happy with the program. Uh, I suppose the question is for Ms. Brooker, what opportunities are there for boys within the, the diverse uh, environment that's created down there, down on Mount Vernon Avenue? Good question. Yes, we love boys in our <laughs> academy. <laughs> No, um, we actually have, um, um, depending on the age of the students, um, the, uh, the male students um, come and they, join, they have classes together with the girls, but we also have um, special boys only classes so that we can help the young men develop the, the male technique and so that they feel that they're not alone in, in class. I, I, I must say, I was actually teaching a, a young class of, of students, um, six and seven year olds, um, earlier this fall. And I had a class of seven girls and seven boys in there. And it was like heaven to have <laughs> um, the, you know, the same number. And so we welcome boys um, and we... we um, yeah, we love boys in the academy, so when, yeah, there you are. Thank you. Thank you for Thank your you call, call, and we appreciate that. So we have just a couple of minutes here before we go to break, so uh, any other important information we need to know about the program? One more thing. Uh, one more thing. Going on? I didn't mention that the, the students who won the 2012 Martin Luther King oratorical contest will also be making a presentation on stage just before we go to air on, on stage. So they'll get a chance to go out there on stage and share why they won that oratorical contest. Well, we're going to have guests from the oratorical contest on the second segment. Get out of here. That, that program <laughs> is also a program of the Community Relations Commission, and it will be actually happening on that Saturday, the, uh, four, the 14th, I want to say, before... Dr. King celebration, and, and that winner will be announced at that day and then come over to join our programming. So uh, we, we do know, we'll talk about that a little later in the break. From Ballet Med, anything else you want to say to, to our community or tonight? Um, well, we are delighted to be involved in these celebrations. As I say, we consider it to be a privilege, um, and we hope that um, it gives the community an opportunity to see our dancers and will come to our performances and maybe to try dancing themselves if they haven't already. There's a little piece mm. at the end of the show sometimes <laughs> where I've seen that actually happen. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, well I, I know, I know that, that it means a lot to our dancers at the end of the show, the fact that they're on stage with all the other presenters and performers, yeah. that it really gives them the sense of something bigger. Oh, so, they're always a highlight you know, of the show. Yeah, yeah that's it's, it's a delight. Rebecca, <laughs> yeah. anything last for you? 
Hands yeah. on. I, uh, I'll just like to say that we're proud to be part of this MLK Day event. Um, it's going to be a great event. And anyone who wants to volunteer, go to www.handsoncentralohio.org. We have over a thousand volunteer opportunities there. So if youth can't make it to the fair, they can always go online and find many, many ways to get involved in the community. Well, we want to thank uh, all of you for being on our show. Dan Willis. Did you say it was free? It's, it's free. free. Our free show. Our free show. Susan Brooker from Ballet Met, thank, thank you, you so much. And Rebecca Vierhoff from Hands On Central Ohio. Thank we you. thank all of you and we ask our uh, audience to stay with us. Uh, um, we'll take a little break and we'll come back and have more about Dr. King's Celebration 2012.